Today on the Pageant Cast, we have Jennifer Jones. She's Ms. United States 2013. Today at the Pageant Cast. Welcome to the Pageant Cast, your home for beauty pageant news and interviews on the internet. Hi, I'm Grayson Hodgkiss, your Miss Illinois Teen USA 2013, and you're watching Pageant Cast with your host, Tim Kretschmann. You're watching the Pageant Cast. I'm so glad you joined us tonight because we have a very special interview tonight with Jennifer Jones, Ms. United States 2013. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, how are you? I'm, I'm fantastic. I love my job. I get to talk to the most beautiful <laughs> women all across the country and across the globe. And you uh, just won the Ms. United States uh, pageant. A lot of people don't know a lot about that pageant. Can, can you get them up to speed? Yes, of course. In my opinion, the Ms. United States pageant and the United States system as a whole is, the, is one of the fastest growing, most up-to-date pageant system there is. It combines what we love from some of the other systems, the runway from USA, and the charity individual portion that, of the political platform, or not political, the platforms that we love from Miss America. Right. And entitles both of them together in that. And it really, what I believe sets us apart is we really are a family. We are the one system that you can go from a preteen, a little miss, all the way up to 55. Our range is most unique from any other system that there is out there. So it, where was it held this year? In Washington, D.C., the week of 4th of July, our nation's capital, it was amazing to be at the White House in the vicinity during that time of the year. It's so unique. I would think so. I really would. Now, I forgot to ask you at the beginning, I always ask this, where are we calling you today or Skyping you today? I am Skyping from Shelby, North Carolina, which is my hometown where I was born and raised. Now, you're in North Carolina. That's pageant country, ain't it? It is. It very much is. It's, it's a beautiful community, even within different systems. I've met the most amazing, wonderful women throughout my journey as a being a pageant contestant through the North Carolina system. And what got you started in pageants? Well, when I was young, I had the thick black brown hair, as you know, a lot of little girls did, and the big eyes. And I had family members try to get my mother to put me in a pageant and she said no she wanted it to be my decision so at 19 years old I watched a friend compete in a local pageant and I looked halfway through my mother and said mom I can do that mom said <laughs> I know you can two months later I ended my own my amateur in my first local so what are some of your pageants or some of your past pageants that you've been involved mm -hmm. in I competed heavily in the Miss America system when I from 19 until 24. I was very blessed to hold the titles of Miss Forsyth County in 2007 and Miss Central Carolina in 2009. I made great friendships, saw some experiences I never would have otherwise had. I was on the Zelia Festival Court for two years, and that's amazing because only six girls in North Carolina get picked, and I got picked twice. So that's just a whole unique experience by itself. But um, I've also done the international system with Joy. She was wonderful in the Carolina international system, which I loved that experience. Got first runner-up representing my hometown. And then now I've you know gone on to win the North Carolina United States and now Miss United States. This is my largest title I've won today. I'm so blessed for it. Well, fantastic. You know, you mentioned at the, at the opening how Ms. United States is quickly growing. And on a macro level, we, we follow all the pageants here, and we have certainly seen where Ms. pageants have really been drawing in top-notch competitors. What is it about the Ms. United States that differentiates it from some of the other Ms. pageants that are out there, other than what you've already stated? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is, is Chris, our national director, does an amazing job of treating everyone equal. There is no one, in my opinion, within our title system that one title is not more important than others. Where in some of the other systems, I do believe the Miz 
is the older one, the one that didn't make it as a younger contestant, where I actually had the decision and the choice to choose to be in the MISS or the MS division for our system. My age gap overlapped. So therefore, I chose the older division because I am in graduate school. I am going on to be a professional, and I felt like I would be more inclined to the professional women of the 26 to 55 versus competing against a 19-year-old. Fantastic. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with more with Jennifer Jones. She's Ms. United States 2013 in just a moment. Don't go anywhere, folks. Now let's take a look at what's going on at Amazon. Let's hear from Corianne Strupp. She's Miss Wisconsin Collegiate America 2013, and she tells us about her new book. Hi, I'm Corianne Strupp, Miss Wisconsin Collegiate America, and author of Friends for Keith. Research shows that everyone experiences bullying at some point in their life, whether they're the target or victim, a bystander, or possibly even the bully themselves. This book is perfect for prevention or healing after the fact. It's based on true experiences with real feelings and real emotions built in, so it's very relatable no matter what age you are. You can find my book on Amazon.com or it's available through BrysonTaylorPublishing.com. The links will be available below. That's right, it's available on Amazon, so to help Pageant Test out, come to our website first and click the link. I'm Amy Gregorio, Mrs. International 2013, and you've found the number one source for pageantry on the internet, the pageant cast. Well, maybe the top three or the top five runners up. Definitely one of the runners up, though. We're back. We're back now with Jennifer Jones, Ms. United States 2013. Now, I was looking through your bio, and it says you have a 3.91 GPA. Does that make you a smarty pants? It does. I am a smart aleck. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> I try to do it. It is something that I work on, but sometimes the filter is just not there, but it's who I am. I think it's part of being a Southern woman. You have that quality of being a smart aleck. <laughs> Okay, well, fantastic. <laughs> now, it, 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 tell me a little bit about your platform. My platform is Back to Health, which is chiropractic as a lifestyle. And with that platform, I am a graduate student in my third year of chiropractic school. I will graduate next September, but I am promoting not only the adjustment. When you think of chiropractic care, you think of the physical adjustment, the cracking, the popping. But in reality, it's so much more than that. It's eating right doing exercise, spending time with your family, being able to unwind with the adjustment as well as part of it. It's wellness care, prevention care. It's an entire lifestyle, but a lot of people, it gets lost in the shuffle. Now, you're the perfect person for me to ask this question. Is it good to crack our knuckles or not? I crack my knuckles. Okay. So and I have gotten mixed reviews from my professors. Some say, no, don't do it. And others say, Especially if it happens naturally, just as you're picking up something or you do it subconsciously, then that's okay because your body still wants to release the pressure that's in with your knuckles. Knuckles. So I have personally gotten mixed reviews from my professors. Mm. But as far as your neck, you know, people that manually crack their neck, that is not good because even though you're cracking, you yeah. may not be putting things where they need to go. You might be making them further subluxated or further misaligned. Whoopsie. Oopsie. <laughs> I better not do that anymore. Now, uh, you did bring something for show and tell for us here. That, I did. That I has did. to do with Being this. Being a chiropractic student, I do have four unique things hanging around my house. Okay. So I have my little spine. Yeah, yeah. This is okay. your head, where your brain sits, and it goes all the way down to your hip. That's where my brain sits. Yeah. It's on that end. <laughs> In your bottom? Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so these, I just have these. This is actually the side of my desk here at my house. And it's good reference. It's also 
good for if you have a patient, you can show specifically the patient what is wrong. And I, the specific one that I have now has the different regions of the, regions of the spine color coded. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> you know, the last time I saw a spine like that just laying around, I think I was watching Predator 2 and they were going into his lair. <laughs> Uh, that's the last time, and I think it was almost as colorful as that one. So, I believe it. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, um, you're also very involved athletically. You have a lot of different athletic endeavors. Now, which is your favorite? What's your favorite thing to do? My overall favorite thing would probably have to be volleyball. Volleyball. Um, okay. Yeah, volleyball. I love beach and indoor, but I have a new hobby I've just started. Okay. It is disc golf. Have you ever played disc golf? Disc golf? That's disc the frisbee golf. golf, right? Where you throw it at a pole and the chains catch it or whatever? Exactly. That is yeah. my new hobby that I've just started. And it's it's very catching because you know the thrill of golf where nothing, it's just you in the hole that you're trying to get the ball in. Disc golf is the same concept. The beautiful thing about disc golf is most courses in the United States are free. So you can, once you invest in the Frisbees in the bag, then to carry all your Frisbees, because you know, you got to have a cute little bag, once you make the initial investment, <laughs> then the playing itself is free for the most part. Some, do, some courses require a $1 or $2 donation, but it's the perfect thing for everyone in the, in the United States. It's the most inexpensive sport I have ever ran across, and it's addictive. See, I find golf of any kind very frustrating. Because that little windmill keeps getting in the way. Yes, I can yeah, see that. Yeah, it gets in the way. It's very difficult for me, and, and I'm just not trainable. Well, it, it, it's been wonderful catching back up with you, Jennifer. We had met in uh, North Carolina. I think it was in Greensboro, if memory serves. Um, Greensboro the, or Charlotte? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, now, you were competing as a miss then. Uh, as I recall, uh, you kind of surprised me quite a bit. I, I believe I was emceeing at the time. And yeah, that was the year that Joy rode the motorcycle in on the stage. Okay, yeah. And I remember, well, Joy didn't ride that motorcycle. True. She did not ride. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have been near the stage had Joy driven that <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah, I, I, I would have been very frightened. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she drives a motorcycle great, but I I, I, I don't know. Anyway, I remember I was emceeing, and all weekend I'm seeing you in sweats and, you know, very comfortable, relaxed. And then you came out there, and you were like two sticks of dynamite out on the, on the stage. I was like, whoa, where did this girl come from? She wasn't here the rest of the weekend. Uh, you really came alive out on the stage, and that, that's a true talent. Well, thank you. I just believe in putting it out on stage when it matters and to be relaxed during the rehearsals because there's no point in getting worked up and uptight during rehearsals. So I just want to be in my element so that I can put my game face on when it's time. Well, I, I, I do have to ask you, too. You, you, you ran off to, to Washington to do the pageant. Who is watching all the dogs? You, you have, what, four dogs, I believe? I do have four dogs. I'm very lucky that... My family came up with me, and my boyfriend's parents were very kind, and they originally had made plans to come watch me compete, but because it was live cast, they stayed home and watched my four dogs for me. Well, fantastic. That was very nice. That's that. wonderful. Okay, we, we are out of time, but I want to give you a chance. Is there any last things you'd like to tell the viewers of the pageant cast? The biggest thing is just get involved with your community. Find out what's important to you and promote it. You are the vessel of what's important to you. And as much as you believe in that, I bet there's thousands of other people that just don't have the voice. So be the voice for everyone out there. Fantastic. Thanks so much tonight. That's Jennifer Jones. She's Ms. United States 2013. Now, something we like to do at the end of each of our shows, Jennifer, is we like to give our best pageant wave while saying Tierra Dreams to our viewers. So uh, I'd like to see, now this is graded, by the way. I, I do oh. grade. So let's see that pageant wave there. Let's see it. Okay, 
I I can see you're you're not uh, putting a lot of effort into that there. A little <laughs> little quiet there. Nah, you can go for a long time with with that wave. I would suggest, yeah. Lots of parade. You yeah. have to save your arm. Lots right. Of parade. You have to switch arms. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't want to look overdeveloped on one side with this big huge <laughs> bicep that's holding up your your hand as as you wave like some sort of wild person. That would be bad. That would be bad. All right. Well, fantastic. Let's say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. Tierra Dreams, everyone. Go ahead. You can say Tierra oh, Dreams. Tierra Dreams, everyone. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you for taking me.